Good morning. Welcome to the Raleigh International Corps online service. We're glad to have you here this morning. John 8.32 says, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will, make, will set you free. God of heaven and earth, we long to be truly free. In this hour of worship, help us to grasp the freedom that comes from seeing you more clearly, loving you more dearly, and following you more nearly. Day by day, give us strength and courage to be your people in this time and in this place. Sing to the Lord a brand new song. Sing for the wonders he has done. With holiness his mighty arm Has ever for him victory won The Lord has made salvation known To every nation, every throne In kindness he remembered me With faithfulness for all to see Shout with joy unto
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're a living hope. Your presence, Lord. I tasted and seen. Sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, and your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence, Lord. Oh. Become more aware.
Good morning, family. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you are our strength and our song. You fill our hearts with joy. As we meet together, may we give thanks to you with our whole hearts as we recount all of your wonderful deeds. Let our hearts be glad as we exalt your name. Inhabit our praises today, Lord. Everlasting Father, you have promised that when your people gather in your name, your presence is here with us. Fix our eyes on you and let our ears be attentive to your voice. Restore to us the joy of our salvation as we worship you. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the source of all true joy in life. Help us to find our joy in you. May your voice be heard more clearly than everything else at this time. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our worlds, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. May your love surround us, your spirit guides us, your voice cheers us, your peace comes us, your shield protects us, your wisdom arms us, wherever you may read me. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Good morning, church. This is the day the Lord made for us. Turn with me in the songbook 662. I invite you to stand up and sing all the trivers together. family. Our scripture today is going to come from Psalm chapter 18 verses 1 through 6 as well as Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17. I love you O Lord my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangle me, and the torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coiled around me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him and to his ears. And again, Colossians chapter three, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, 
Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all over these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom and, and sing, as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Hello, church family. The next song we will be singing is song number 261 in the Salvation Army songbook, Shine, Jesus, Shine. And I would ask that you would join in on all three verses this morning. Let's sing on the first verse together. Good morning, family. Today, uh, this is my pleasure and the honor to be able to share God's word uh, with the Salvation Army family. We will think about those who belong to God. The first, I will open the uh, start as a story. Uh, at the LA Marathon, uh, is Los Angeles the marathon, there was a man who ran the uh, 
uh, ran the entire marathon with the both hands instead of a leg. And this is the Bob Warrenton. He was a veteran who lost both legs during the Vietnam War. He walked uh, 2,768 miles on the American constant with his arm and then crossed in three years, eight months, and the six days. Through the, his uh, appearance, he wants to be an opportunity to instill hope in youth and the people with uh, disabilities. After successful crossing, the reporters ask him how hard and difficult was it? And he answered, I have never had a boring day. Why? Because God is my love. God has given me the strength. The many people are upset when they see someone's a little better than themselves. I know not you, just me. The, however, the Bob Warrington walked in the position of the handstand. But he was grateful and happy because God's love dwelled in him. Like Bob Warrington, God is strength to those who belong to God and confess that God is love. There is, there, uh, there is nothing to feel or uh, be discouraged in whatever circumstance you encounter. No matter what the circumstance, if God is your strength, joy, peace, and gratitude are overflowing in your heart, in my heart. Who belong to God? Then what kind of a person do we think belong to God? What kind of person do you think of belong to God? The first, always live in gratitude with love and peace. First, always live in gratitude with love and peace. Uh, today, at the Old Testament, uh, Psalm 18 first, David confessed, I love you, O Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. When people realized and tasted the God's amazing love, they confessed, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The like a David. Like a... Uh, like a David, uh, when the relationship between God and me is formed, I will enjoy the peace that the Lord gives me. No matter what happens to me or whatever problem I encounter, and I can be thankful. As they live in this land, everyone thinks that they live in love, but the object of love is important. If you look at the characteristic of the unfortunate person, they are choosing the object of love incorrectly and the love in the wrong part, not right part. If you don't choose the object of love well, you can face great misfortune. You can meet the, the big problem. Also, it can lead to destruction. Many people fall in love with Satan instead of the God and love their idols. And look at the Psalms, chapter 16. Uh, look at the Psalm, chapter 16, four said, "The sorrow, the sorrow of those who will increase who run after other gods." But as long as you love the right object of love, you will begin to exalt tremendous power. Love God the source of love, love others with the love, then you are a happy person. This is the true story of World, world War II. The German army prisoners uh, were taken to the Siberia in Russia and they killed. But those who survived at the times were characteristic. Those people who survived had pictures of their loved ones they did not die easily. This is because those who people look at their picture and then begin to hope. 
In the Corinthians chapter uh, 3, uh, verse uh, 13 to 14, Peter with each other and the forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and of all this uh, purchase put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unite. Those who have been loved by the Lord say that they should follow the Lord. Also, it tells us to be forgiving what the heart of mercy and, and the compassion with the love. When we become the person of the love, we become a person who lives as well as a person of the peace and a person of the gratitude. I hope we uh, all live in love and peace as people who appreciate everything. The second, we love with a supreme value of God. Second, we love with the supreme value of the God. In the Old Testament, uh, Psalm chapter 18, verse 2 and 3, it is my favorite Bible verse. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and, and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold, I call to the Lord who is words of praise, and I am saved from my enemy. David lived in faith in absolute trust and dependence on God. Not on people, wealth, power, or strong nations or idols. Of course, uh, there were times when he was the weak in faith, sometimes failed, sometimes uh, tempted by the sin, and then shaked in the faith. But when he trusts in God through the discipline and the trial of the God's love, God became his strength. And then he was able to do wonders. In the birth, birth three, I'm going to read it one more time. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemy. Here, uh, David confesses that God is to be praised and that the purpose of he, his life is God. His life is God. He's confessed that God is my glory. Right. So we also we have to confess that God is my glory. God is your glory. The, uh, think about the David's story more. The power that David felt and went against the Goliath, it came from God. It's this power came from God. It also possible with the God's helping grace to be able to escape the uh, threat, uh, threat of the death many times uh, during the King Saul's times. And even with the son, son uh, uh, Absalom's uh, uh, rebellion, he could win because of God's help and the grace. Even when he had the opportunity to kill, uh, opportunity to kill uh, King Saul, he didn't kill him because he knew God's, God's absolute value and would do and trust him with uh, paying back his enemies. It was because he believed in God's absolute trust when Nathan revoked his sins. He repented by cheering the bath with tears, without ignoring the prophet's words, or did not kill the prophet like a soul. God loved such David and exalted him to be a, a respected king of all the people, all the unified kingdom of the Israel. At the New Testament, the Colossians chapter 3, 15, let the peace of Christ ruin your heart, since as members of one body, you were called to the peace and be thankful. If you, if, if you want the peace of Christ to claim your heart, 
it is possible when you place absolute trust on the Lord and trust Him alone. People who live looking at the environment will lose the peace of mind when their environment worsens. People who depend on money to life are anxious that when the money runs out. People who depend on the people cannot stand. If the people they depend on change their mind, the circumstance, they live or die. There are people who depend on themselves and you try to live their lives better than the Lord. However, I surely tell you, humans are not strong enough to overcome all circumstances. Now, look at the world. The world is living in fear and the difficult situations. Likewise, we are worried and the fearful and an inconvenience situation. Why? Because of the virus. In fact, human beings are vulnerable people who have to be supplied from the outside. No matter how strong a man is, if he cannot get oxygen, his life is in danger. No matter how much he or she is experienced in the farming and the hard work, they will fail if the climatic environment cannot keep up. Those who believe in the, those who believe in the providence of the Almighty, who govern all circumstances and receive the help of the Lord, will find peace beyond the environment. You can live as the thankful person. The disciple Paul, the, he was able to praise God and then rejoice in the prison because he placed absolute trust in God. May we, like uh, David and Paul, we become the people who place absolute trust in God and live only in the Lord. The third one, third one, we obey the world, obey the world and live a life of humility and patience. We obey the world and live a life of humility and patience. Uh, at the New Testament, Colossians chapter 3 and 16, let the world of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach as admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalm, hymn, and spiritual songs with a great to the in your heart to God. The here dwelling in your literally, it, it does not mean that you have a, you have a lot of the Bible knowledge, but it means that you obey and then practice the word with your heart in mind. Those who live according to the word are abandoned in the word. Power comes to those who obey the word and live. Those who belong to God and are loved by the Lord must have the word in their heart. We must remember that the word, word of Christ so he can guide our lives. When it comes to live in the difficult way regardless of the word, you must always live in the word rather than sing in it temporarily. So in other words, the word must be life. Yes, the word must be life. Therefore, through God's word, I hope you will be loved by God in any case. I want to tell you the one of the story. It is a true story. Uh, there was a, a famous drunkard in the London. He was drinking, the fighting, and the beating his wife during the day. So the neighbors hated him. One day he was uh, <clears throat> he was ar arrested by the police on while the drinking and the fighting. When they taken by police, the people out and they mocked him. They yelling him. At that time, a girl lent the drunkard and they say that, Mister, I am looting for you. I will go to the police station together. And 
He began to shed tears in the eyes of the drunkard, watching the girl the working alongside him, cheerfully singing. The girl was Kathleen Booth, the Starbucks and I founder. She is my, uh, our founder. This is when she was only 12 years old, only 12 years old. The girls loved the repented the farmers, uh, famous the drunkard to become a Christian. It was because she was full of the words to evangelize to be instead in season, out of season. Therefore, those who belong to God, those who are loved by the Lord, must speak abundantly. There is also humility and gentleness for those who belong to God. Text Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, chapter 3 and 12, closes, closes yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, and gentleness, and patience. Also, Jesus said in Matthew uh, chapter 11, 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Also, the first Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 5, God opposes the, the proud but gives grace to the humble. I, I already told David uh, the story. David, uh, he always tried to live a life of obedience to God's word. And he always lived by exalting God and humbly giving all the glory to God. God honored such a David. However, think about Saul. After becoming king, uh, the, he arrogantly ignoring the word of God, uh, being uh, disobedient. So King Saul abandoned God, and the throne was taken away. And those who have been chosen by the God must be the patience. People try to make themselves uh, stand out by wearing the expensive clothes, uh, stand out by wearing the uh, expensive the watch, something like Lorex and uh, Omega I never ever seen before. So, however, about the clothes that God's people must wear, the Bible that testifies that they are clothes of the righteousness. Amen. The armor of light, the Christ, and the clothes of humility, meekness, and patience. The poles. Paul says one of the characteristics of the love is the patience. Uh, the first Corinthians chapter 13, May 4, he said, Love is long suffering. Love is long suffering. And the Hebrew, in Hebrew chapter 12, uh, verse 1, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangle, and let us learn with perseverance, the race marked out for us. The believers the, can, taste the, can taste the wonderful grace of God when they humbly rely on the Lord and hold on to the word with the patience and the wait for the Lord's mercy. When the people uh, belong to God, go to heaven, they face a lot of trouble. In the meantime, Armed um, with the word and the humbling relying on the Lord, we can be victorious in our faith. Those who belong to God live in great in love and peace. Those who live with uh, absolute value only to God. There are people who obey the word and live a life of humility and the patience. There are you. God bless you.
Well, thank you. I pray that as you listen to the video today that you took the time to think about your place and your uh, position in the family of God. Are you, are you really a part of the family of God today? With that, we'll look together on song number 932, our closing song in the Salvation Army songbook. It simply says, the Lord's command is to go into the world and preach the gospel unto all. It's just as true today as when his first disciples heard this mighty call. So let us gird ourselves and go to battle against the powers of sin and wrong. Join the fight. For the right in his everlasting might and sing our marching song. On we march with the blood and the fire. Would you sing together with me on the first verse of song number 932 in the Salvation Army songbook? that you love him that much to proclaim the good news wherever you go so that salvation is free to all people and you're inviting them to be a part of the family of God that you enjoy so much of being a part. No, we're not perfect. No, we get it wrong sometimes. But oh, we know where our destination ends. 
and that's in heaven. So come and join. Be a part of the family of God. Thank you for joining in with us today. And we pray that you will have a blessed week as you go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ wherever you are. For it is in Jesus' name we proclaim this. God bless you.